it's literally the angels of destiny show why is this show called this you may ask so i'll tell you the exception mean of angels messenger and the exception mean of destiny is to make firm establish so my guests and i bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present and also i like working with angels and the calmness they bring now in a moment i will introduce you to my wonderful guest vivian fox and possibly poppy the cat um, but before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded people. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I'm a guide who helps you remember your divine presence so that you can heal your past, create your future, and transform your present to raise your consciousness, understand your spiritual path, and to take charge of your destiny so you can spread your wings and soar. Now, I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use angelic Reiki, future life progression, past life regression, guided meditation, and angel oracle cards to assist you in remembering why you are here, your spiritual path, and the clarity on the next steps to take. I also offer a multidimensional virtual retreat, several transformational packages, a journey through lifetimes, a six-week guided meditation series to help you gain confidence, and various workshops. Now, each episode of this show covers various themes for your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel oracle card reading or something else with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, returning guest, I should say, Vivian Fox, a band why it's important to create balance in your life. Now, Vivian is a balance procedure trainer, intuitive light language and Reiki healer. Vivian teaches clients how to align their chakras and energies so that they are in a balanced state, which allows them to create a more balanced, healthy life. Since our last show, where Vivian talked about the balance procedure, she has now fully stepped into working in the therapy world and added Reiki and light language to her practice, which has enhanced not just her clients' experiences, but her experiences as well. And every Monday morning, Vivian goes live on Facebook with her Monday morning musings, which are a lovely start to the week. Now, with testimonials including, as a spiritual healer, Vivian has the ability to support people in their times of need. I know this personally as she has supported me in times of need to help me come back to myself and feel regulated. And Vivian is the lady who chances back into harmony, is able to step into my energy and lift my low. Her amazing light language and cool balance procedure approach to support over and under active chakra energy to just bring alignment. How cool is she? And I truly believe in her gifts she has to support, heal and elevate myself and others as we make our way in life. So without further delay, hello Vivian and welcome back to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? I'm good and I'm balanced. Hi Ray, thank you very much for having me back. Brilliant, I'm so glad you're balanced. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Vivian and I want to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. So Vivian, why don't you tell us more about your continuing journey and about creating balance in our lives? So just if you keep seeing a um, black tail wagging, this is Poppy who's decided to come and join us and is sitting on my lap. She, I think she's settling down now, so we may have less uh, waggy tails. So, yes, the balance procedure. I, have, I wanted to learn about it because it was an easy thing to learn. It didn't mean that I needed to have months of therapy. didn't mean I had to spend thousands of pounds doing it. And it is something that's easily teachable and people can use it on themselves and other people. And that is what I love about it, because it is a simplistic tool and it's very, very powerful. Um, it, we have nine cards and each of them represents a different part of life, if you like. And also they represent different parts of the body and it's bringing in numerous different therapies within it. So we're looking at sacred geometry, um, astrology and numerology, chakras, colours, all sorts of different modalities brought into a set of cards. And this is what we're using to balance our life, balance our chakras, balance our day, balance our emotions. And because it's such an easy tool to teach and for someone to use, it's why I, I would love everyone to be doing it, be they child, adult 
or whatever. I'm not sure what else there is, but we could that's another subject. <laughs> <laughs> we could go on a completely yeah. different conversation with that one. <laughs> that's for another show. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that would be lovely. Um, so, yes, and can be used on pets, animals, you know, anything. I'm thinking of um, Michelle Budd and her horses. Yeah. Um, so, as I say, it's an easy tool to, to use. Sorry, I think I've now got cat hair on my chin. <laughs> That's the beauty of cats. I'm just waiting for the day Elsie decides to come on my lap. That'll, that'll be a day I know she's um, fully um, chilled out and relaxed with me. See whether she's coming along today to be balanced. <laughs> awesome. Um, yes, so for example, um, prior to coming on here, I was going, right, I want to be balanced in my communication. I want to be effective in my communication. And so therefore, the I'm not sure if this is going to show in reflection mm -hmm. or not, is I'm using the balance card on top of the pack. And that is working on the throat chakra. And it's about being creative and a pioneer as well. And, I, you know, it's so awesome. And I must, must reflect back um, in the past, and this is a bit of history. I, and what triggered this was um, listening to one of the previous podcasts that Ray did with someone about talking about what happens in your childhood affecting your adulthood still. And so when I was a child, um, I'm not sure when it started, I'm assuming some sort of traumatic experience that happened. But as I um, probably, I don't know, maybe seven, seven onwards, I was always terrified of talking to people that I didn't know, that I wasn't comfortable with. So anything happening at school, if um, there was something new that I had to do or something, then I didn't want to have to talk. I didn't want to speak. And I don't know how, but I even ended up in a, um, a stage, um, a play at school. Uh, and, I, and I had to speak and lo and behold, did I have a um, upset belly the morning of the day of the day of the show? And in hindsight, I realised that was my trigger. Was that I was so scared of doing it that I was going to um, create this stomach upset. And this was a pattern going on through childhood: is I'd have a stomach upset every time I didn't want to do something, but no one figured it out, including myself. And so now. That I go, oh, I was obviously in such a state that I created something to stop me doing something. And so I continued in that vein of not speaking out. And I remember when I was um, working, I was in my early 20s, and my voice went really, really husky. I still had a voice. I didn't have laryngitis, but I was so husky. And in retrospect, I then realized I was in such a stressed, depressed state that it was affecting my voice. And so, so much comes back to your voice. So if you have a sore throat, why have you got a sore throat? People go, oh, well, you know, everyone's got a sore throat or I've got a cold to come in or whatever. But it isn't necessarily that. It can be that you're not speaking up that you have got a blocked throat for some reason, that your voice isn't being heard, that you're being suppressed. And so this is why I found the, the um, communication card so powerful, because it is releasing your throat chakra so you can speak. And when I, going on from that, when I went into business, I thought I've got to get over this fear of speaking in front of people um, and I wanted to do public speaking, I wanted to give talks, you know, I wanted to be leading workshops, etc, etc. So I went to a um, public speaking trainer, who is, is a lovely lady, and, but isn't this funny and ironic, that I wanted one-to-one -one training because I was too scared to be in a group. If I was in a group, I would be exposed. And, and I'm so glad this lady was very wise. And she said to me, 
I think you would do really well. You'd really benefit from joining my program, which is a group program. And I was like, you know, I was just like, you know, throat, throat chakra totally blocked. I, uh, uh, I'm scared, rabbit in the headlights, being with other people, you know, being exposed, you know, what if I'm found to be lacking, what if I'm a fraud, whatever, you know, all that dialogue that's going through your head about what's wrong with you. And I thought about it and I thought, oh, look, just do it. And it meant traveling up to London. It meant going somewhere I didn't know, it meant seeing people I'd never met before. And so there was all these fears coming in and yet I did it and I just loved it. It was great meeting all these other like-minded people who wanted to do what I wanted to do. They wanted the confidence to speak in public. And the lady who was teaching us was absolutely amazing. And she brought in um, different people to bring a different element of public speaking. Um, I mean, one time we even had a, um, I can't remember, is her name Lynn Fawkes? I'm not sure. Um, it's comedy, comedy lady. Anyway, she was teaching us to be comedic. <laughs> <laughs> and it was absolutely awesome. Absolutely loved it. And um, we had, as groups, we had to create this um, little sketch. And I brought in um, a real life element of myself to make a joke. And so it wasn't off the cuff. I had planned it, but the way I delivered it, everybody laughed and that gave me such a buzz and I was like this is awesome oh can I do stand-up comedy ah, brilliant <laughs> so yeah so um that brought me out of my shell somewhat yeah I can, can see, see that one too here I am uh, speaking on a um, live podcast <laughs> Yes, but you do. But you do your Monday musings live, don't you? On oh, Facebook? I do. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Again, I I I take guidance. And, um, obviously, we get told a lot of stuff, but we don't necessarily hear it or listen to it or even know that it has come through to us. And yet, we are constantly being guided. And it's only recently that I'm beginning to take more notice. Of it you know like um you're going along the road and you're thinking oh god there's traffic jam ahead do i go left or right and or do i stay in it and then you immediately get go left and then your conscious brain kicks in and goes oh yeah but if i stay in this lane it won't take too long to go through da, da, da. if i go left it's a 10 minute detour da, da, da. anyway so you ignore your intuition don't go left and it takes you another half hour rather than the 10 minutes. So it's all these things keep coming through that we don't necessarily take notice of. Anyway, so going back to my Monday morning meetings, <laughs> um, I was guided to start doing it and I'd only done a few Facebook lives. And I was like, I, I keep getting things happen. And I'm like, I, I'm just gonna share it with everyone. So, some of them like, are so funny. <laughs> yeah, accidentally. Sometimes. Accidentally funny. <laughs> I mean, I get myself into some predicaments, don't I? And then I talk about them live on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, not, not deliberately, Kim. They just happen. <laughs> oh, dear. Yes. Um, so, yes, each one has a theme. And I do it. I do it on a Monday morning. I try and do it at eight thirty in the morning. Doesn't always work like that. Most weeks I have done it, even if it happens to be on a Tuesday. And I'm currently on, uh, I think, week forty nine. So we're heading for fifty two. And what I was thinking was, wouldn't it be brilliant if I can get at least fifty two people watching it live on that fifty second week? So hopefully, anyone here who is watching this can um, tap in. It'll be, I think it's three weeks. I should actually check the date. But, you know, if you connect with me on Facebook and uh, then 
you can see one Monday morning musings live and I'm saying each week that we're coming up to week 52 please get your friends get your family get everyone in <laughs> to watch it live I don't know what... and when, when we get the date I'll put it in the um in the, in the comments anyway so people you. you know get, can can go onto Facebook live to to see that so how did the um Right, you know, was the Reiki before the balance procedure? Was it after? How did you get into how did you get into the Reiki? Um, I think I just think I did the first part of Reiki during the lockdown. And I think I was doing the balance procedure roughly the same time as well, the training. You lose track, don't you? You, I think you're actually doing the balance procedure a little bit more. It might have been a little, yeah. Yeah, because it's about two years ago or so you're on the show. Oh, was it that long ago? Um, Okay, so yes, probably balance procedure first and then Reiki because partly I did Reiki um, because light language came in about four or five years ago and i oh so that came in before the balance procedure yeah yeah oh it it happened when i started networking and i met various people who had a spiritual bent like myself and we got um lady called sharon lynn was holding a higher awareness development group and i'd go to that um, the light language had already been prior to that. But being in a group where you're all meditating together um, is very powerful. And so I think being in that situation has helped develop the light language, if you like. And, yeah, so I've, I've been doing that quite a long time. And is um, I, I think it's awesome the way it. I call it speaking in tongues. I know you call it harmonics. I just use speaking in tongues as a not as a biblical reference, but as a reference that people recognise. Yeah. And so I channel, I channel, and I speak, and what I'm saying is, I have no idea, and I don't think anyone else has any idea. And I wouldn't know whether it's a foreign language, a galactic language, an extinct language. It's just something that comes through. And it could be just that it's a resonance of the voice that those words create the resonance and that is creating the healing or the shifting in energies. And with it, I'm also doing a lot of hand movements. And again, that's just something that comes through and I'll be this and that and this and you know it's something that just happens yeah and it's all part of it and then i will change voice um i may be chanting and maybe i'm not a singer um but singing may come through or like i say singing i use the word very loosely because i'm not <laughs> But um, so I'll get, I'll, you know, I'll potentially get different people, for want of a better word, coming through um, who do different things. So, and I'm, I visualize things when it's happening. So I'll be visualizing where on the body I am, what am I doing? And that's how mine works. I'm not bringing messages through, I am working. Poppy's just heading across the screen. <laughs> Bless her. Are you coming back or are you staying there? No, you're coming back. Okay. <laughs> um, sorry. So, yeah, so I, I just move along different parts of the body and I get visuals of the body and I get peculiar visuals. Um and that is what I will relay to the person in the end, at the end of the session, to say, I got this. And they'll go, because, I mean, some people, when they're giving healing or channeling, they will feel what people have. They'll go, oh, my shoulder really aches or my hand hurts or whatever. And that person will go, yes, that's what I've you know, got issues with. I don't feel it, I see it. 
and yeah i do some i do some really weird things i see really weird things and all i can do is relay it to the person because i say it doesn't mean anything to me but this is what i'm seeing and funnily enough they will then go oh yes that is blah and i'm going I, i'm just like in awe that this has come through and that it is helping those people because that's my belief is what i'm doing is helping those people but like language isn't necessarily recognized by a lot of people and they don't know it they don't, haven't heard of it so i thought i'm going to do reiki as well as it's a recognized thing a lot of people here heard of it and also if i am trying to get into um public settings if you like nhs or something like that then Reiki is recognised. If I went in to a doctor's surgery and said, oh, by the way, I do light language, I could help the patients. <laughs> oh, there we go. And the door is over here. <laughs> <laughs> but if I go in and say I do Reiki, they may then ask, um, have you done your 100 hours practice? <laughs> and I'll be like, hmm. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's why I did the uh, Reiki. And also to help myself. Um with the light language, I, I, funnily enough, I don't ask for my own healing. Isn't that strange? I ask for help from angels and from Good. universe, and I balance. Um, and this is, I mean, this is what I love. You know, if if I happen to have a, yesterday, I had a streaming nose in the afternoon, and I'm like, what's going on? I thought, don't know what's going on. I refuse to have a cold. <laughs> I don't do colds. That's it. You know, I just refuse to be ill. And uh, so I was like, come on, nose. What's what's it about? I didn't get anything telling me what it was about. So I was like, I'll just keep balancing on it then. And I balanced on it, balanced on it, balanced on it about four times during the afternoon. It cleared up. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> but that's what I love about it. So you've got little niggles. You've got a headache. You know, you don't need to take a tablet and balance on it. You've got a sore throat. You don't need to take throat lozenges to balance on it. Yeah, I, it I, it's shifting your energy. I, I like that. And the thing is, possibly why you don't actually do the light language healing on yourself is because when you're actually working on other people, you're actually getting the resonance, the energy of that healing for you yourself. Indeed. I don't. I don't think about that. I know people say that um, it's a two-way thing, and as it's going through you, yes, it's um, it's leaving its imprint on you as it goes through to someone else. So yeah. yeah. And another another thing I found with Reiki is that at like now I'm thinking about it and I can feel that my my hands not that you can see anything but the palms of my hands are burning you know it's just that energy that heat is just just manifests itself and it's like I sometimes I'm thinking well what am I going to do with this because it's like I just want to go you know like um not superman but whatever power whatever yeah. it's like you just want to go and just shoot that energy out but generally i just go okay i'll just send it out to the world i'll send it out to people with love you know because it's now built up in me i want to give it out and or if if my throat is playing up then i'll i will put my hands off my throat and mm. just give myself some uh, some reiki or some whatever energy it is that's coming yeah. through me <laughs> But, but, then, but then that's that's the beauty when the energy comes in. You know, you can just give it out to to send it out to wherever it's needed, whether that's the human and animal Gaia, where where wherever it needs to go, and you and you just send that out. And that's the beauty, I think, of working with um, sort of like the different um, languages and the Reiki and the energy, etc is that as long as the intention is that it goes to where it's needed, it will always go where, it will always be absolutely perfect and go where it's needed at that particular moment in time, even if it isn't a particular person or animal in front of you. Mm. And you've just given me a great idea about using the balance cards, like balancing the earth and the energies using the balance cards. 
because all the time that we're giving out that positive and focusing it towards where it's needed, then we are raising the resonance of the world and of people. And it's so much needed. Exactly. And the more that people start working with these energies and start remembering their divine presence and yes. bringing in all these 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 beautiful skills and connecting with it you know even if you're not actually practicing it but you're receiving those energies in a way you're amplifying that um, beautiful um, energy to raise the vibration um, of, of, the, of the world as well so every time you have a treatment with somebody you're raising the vibration yes Working on oneself is working on the whole. Exactly. So I, I want to go it. back. I oh, know. Oh, we've just sorted the world out. Amazing. <laughs> just amazing what can happen. Um, so, so how did? So how you know? So when you first the light language, you first it first hit you. What did you think? How? Where were you? What happened? I really don't remember. I don't. I don't think I was, I'm trying to think whether... Were you, were you still working in accountancy or had you got into therapy? No, it was after that. So after I'd, um, after my position was made redundant and I decided that actually I'll, I'll set up my own business, which wasn't therapy at that point. Um, and yeah, so I started networking and as the same meeting spiritual spiritual i don't it's difficult using that word spiritual isn't it? it without the connotations that go with it um people who understand energies if you like and higher presences etc being with those sorts of people was totally totally different to what i was used to I, you know i didn't mix in those circles so it i find it it's wow. I think my first network meeting that I went to, I am still good friends with three of the people I met that day. And they're all into the spiritual side of things. And so I think meeting those and then going to different groups and things like that is just, it just brought it out. Um, but as to a day, a time, a where, a when I, I i don't know that's, it's just just calm yeah yeah then and that's the way the way these things of, often do don't don't they you know i i cannot remember when i really started working with angels i've probably been working them with them forever i really can't remember mm. i mean i i i love with meditation um you can have such powerful meditations if you actually, and again, if it's in a group setting, the energies can create such incredible meditations. I, I mean, I, in group settings, I've had the most amazing things happen. Um, and very galactic um, meditations. And another experience I had was when I hadn't been to Glastonbury and I wanted to go for a long, long time. And then I went, not this summer, just gone, the summer before. And we went into the, the wells, um, the inside part. What's it called? The White Spring. The, is that the chalice? Yeah, oh, the no, White you, Spring. You, you've got the oh. chalice well, which is the Red Springs, and then you've got the White Springs. That's which, in the building. It's in the small building, yeah. Yeah, that, that was incredible. I, I, love, mean, I love the White that Springs. That was a phenomenal experience. Um, uh, what was it? At one point, I, I was in the middle of, I think it was the back pool mm. on my own, and I just started doing light, speaking light language, and the acoustics was incredible. Oh, no. And it was just rebounding across the place. And I was just like, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the white, white springs are, are amazing. And yeah, the, the um, vibrations and the um, echoes and everything are just 
so amazing. I mean, it was so amazing. I was, I was, I was actually there once. As, as everyone knows, I go down to Glassby rather a lot. Um, and I'm running a retreat next year, everyone in June. So, so keep that, keep that. Yeah, I'm hoping to be on it. <laughs> yes, I need to put that data out there. Um, but yeah, it was whilst I, I was there, and I actually um, was just sitting there by the goddess side of of it. Um, and it actually turns out I was one of the original um, goddesses who actually looked after the White Spring. Oh, that's giving me goosebumps. Wow. It, it, it was absolutely amazing. You know, I was just there and it was like I was just connecting with all these goddesses of the original spring. And it was just like this unconditional. Oh, my God. It was just so, so, so amazing. Um, you know, and that's after several years of being going down there. And then and suddenly oh. it was like, oh, I remember this one. I, I was I was getting downloaded um, a lot of coding. I was getting lots of green um, signs and symbols and all sorts. It was just flowing in, and I'm like, <gasps> wow! And then I connected in with someone else's energy, someone else who was there. But I mean. For the lay person, they'll think, what on earth are you talking about? But I felt myself connect to their higher energy, their higher self. It was like it was above them that I was I was connecting into them. And I was just like, this place is awesome. <laughs> it it is, yeah. The whole the whole of Glass Glastonbury is is uh, um is is amazing and uh yeah, and, and Glastonbury is one of those places that will only show you or, to, or you'll only get into places that you're meant to go into um, and, you, and other times you won't find them or you may go down there again and you'll never be able to get it. You'll never find the White Spring open because you're never meant to go back yeah, into it again. Yeah, because we were lucky because it was during COVID. It was at the point when things were sort of opening up, but we were limited on um, how many people could congregate in one place. And the place was actually shut over that weekend. But it was opening at certain times, but no one knew when it was opening. And so we, our group, because I was in the group, we we went there and they were open and everybody was queuing. And it was like, oh, well, they're only open for so long. And we're like, well, we sort of like, you know, the, the people who'd arranged the, the thing had tried to book it. And so there was a whole group of us wanted to go in together. And... Um, it just so happened that we did all get in on that day that we were there at the right place at the right time to get in because otherwise it was shut. Yeah. <laughs> and I think so many of us had an awesome experience in there. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's just one of the many beautiful places um, down in Glastonbury that you, that you, can, you, know, that you can have um, experiences in, which is... Uh, which is always uh, pretty awesome down there. So when someone comes to see you, do they come to see you just for the balance procedure or when you're doing the balance procedure, does the light language come in? Does the Reiki come in? How does it all, all work? Is it individual or does it all just mix together? Um, I would say that I would do individual sessions on each thing. So on the balance procedures, there's a set. Um, we can have a... Um, energy alignment session where we look at getting yourself in alignment first that you learn how to do it and we look at the wheel of life so we'll be investigating that and going okay where are you at now are your is your wheel of life in balance and a lot of the time people will go oh well you know family life's great work life's rubbish and it's actually using the cards to balance the different areas so that you feel more positive about them. And just using the cards creates change because you're changing your energy and so therefore changing your energy. So say, for example, you are going, I've got, um, I want to create something, um, a new course, for example, and I've got no idea what I want to do create it about um and you you just got no ideas so you know we've got the co-creation cards 
So we put that on top and balance on it. And then really, really like imagine what it'd be like to be creating what you want to do. And really breathe into that energy, feel it, and know that you've balanced your chakra on it. And then things will start to come. You listen to that intuition. You listen to that angel that's talking to you. You listen to your gut. And ideas just come in. I'm very much an ideas person. Um, what I need is the implementation. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you need to work on your balance. Yes. <laughs> me, me creating my balance in my life. And so it is just... Um, so that will be an alignment session. We don't have the... Um, level it was called level one workshop and that is the next stage of um learning more about the balance so that we can you've got more of an understanding once you've had your alignment and then if someone wants to go into actually teaching it to other people then we have the practitioner um level and people can do that and then if they want to use that in their business um balancing other people then they can become the practitioner and do that. And then myself, I wanted to go back on to further and actually train people to be able to balance and to become a practitioner. So that's what I've done. That's roughly how it works. But I look at doing workshops on um, creating that balance in your life. And also to one that I have um, tested is about your money because my background's accountancy and to me i'm always looking at i'm very passionate about i want to help people make money save money um consider why they're spending the money that they spend and so that they've got a more healthy balance around money and so again the money aspect can be applied to the will of life like, do you spend too much money on your kids? Are you compensating, for example, that you think, oh, I don't spend enough time with them or buying something? Or, you know, I grew up in a poor household, so I never got anything, so I'm going to make sure my kids don't have that. Yeah. Or do you find that you're addicted to shoes? And it's like, I must have six colours of the same pair of shoes, just for an example. And how much is possessions filling the hole? Is it you'll get that dopamine hit of buying something and it's the best thing since sliced bread. And you know, ten minutes later even, you're flat. And that thing that meant so much to you five, ten minutes ago it's gone and then it goes to the back of the wardrobe or whatever you know so this is what i want to create is that balance in life around money as well so that people haven't got all that guilt going on and that angst and that let's fill the hole and you know oh i don't this you know doing the the sexist thing you know the lady buys a dress and hides the receipt puts it in the back of the wardrobe and brings it out because you're going out to dinner. And he goes, oh, how long have you had that? And you go, oh, that I had it years ago. You know, oh, I just haven't worn it. Instead of going, I bought it last week and it cost me 300 quid. You know, where's the honesty in that? And how much guilt have you got? So that is what I want to get people out of, that they're removing those guilts about money. And that they feel in flow, that they feel abundant, that money is coming to them. And it, because at the end of the day, money is energy. And how much of our old stories from childhood are we hanging on to in adulthood that is then saying, well, I don't deserve this, or money's too hard to get, or money doesn't grow on trees, or whatever negative story you were brought up with. You know, we have our patterning from our parents. We don't lose it, we, we fight it, and some of the time we don't even recognise we have it. So it's 
yeah, getting through, looking at all that and removing that, those blocks or those things that are stopping you so that you are in flow abundantly. I mean, I, I do, um, I like saying I am um, financially abundant. Money comes easily to me. I love money. Money loves me. All these positive money statements. And then suddenly someone will go, oh, you know, I owed you such and such. Here it is. Or um, thanks for doing that for me. Here you go. You know, and all these things happen. You know, I'll buy a lottery ticket. I haven't won the lottery. <laughs> Big, I, I just, I just got in two, two pounds, two pounds sixty here. A lucky dip here, five pounds exactly. here. It's winning, isn't it? And so, it's attracting, being in flow, and you attract it. It comes. It's having that hundred percent belief without the doubt, which I'm still working on. That. <laughs> We're, all of us are always so we continue working so do so with the balance procedure um the reiki the light language do you actually have to be in physical contact with a person or can you do it distance online um over the phone whatever that is a good point everything i but ease now everything is easier online isn't it i mean if someone's local to me then I'm happy to do balance procedure in person. Um, but I don't, as far as my Reiki and light language, it is easy to do online. And people go, well, how can you do it online? And then I'm like, because it's energy. Energy is moving. You know, I'm just tuning into you on the psychic level, on the energy level. And... That's how it works. And then people still go, yeah, but that doesn't make sense. And then I then try and do the, okay, so when you listen to the radio, do you see the radio waves? No. Do you then say, oh, well, I don't listen to the radio because I can't hear it because I can't see how those radio waves got to me. You don't. You accept it. When you have an x-ray, you don't go, Oh, well, I don't believe the x-ray picture because I don't know how it got created. And so this is where I'm trying to explain to people everything is energy. And so we, like, um, our bodies are energy. It's mostly made up of water and sound waves. So say you're listening to really bassy music and it's thump, 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 thump. You feel it through your body because it's a, it's moving the water in your body. But you don't question why it does that. But people will question, well, how can you work on me if you're not touching me? Because I can. Let me do it. I'll show you. Exactly. Experience and, it and you'll get the answer yeah, as yeah. to why it works. And so with the balance procedure, again, ideally you will have a set of cards so you can balance use them to balance but online i can connect into your energy i ask your permission to connect into your energy and so i will have balanced myself i'll be all balanced and i'll show you that i'm balanced and then i will then use the cards on you i've connected into your energy and then suddenly i'll be swaying backwards or sideways or whatever happens because it's now your energy that i'm working on not my own and i just think it's amazing and incredible you know and during lockdown people didn't have that couldn't have that physical contact and so that's where i think a lot of um, therapists come into their own because they're working energetically and didn't have to be there yeah. and so therefore people could still be helped i mean when i do a um, light language with someone all i want is to know what they look like you know, that's it. And then that's enough, that's enough to say, right, I can connect. But generally, I'll do it on um, Facebook Messenger, on video. And then I've seen them, I've had a chat with them. I'll say, right, okay, chill out, relax, lay down, whatever you want to do. And I start working on them. You know, so I put the phone down 
because I'm obviously I'm doing a lot of hand signals, so I'm not waving the phone around as well. <laughs> no. And you know, I'm talking, and then they zone out and have a chill time while I'm doing my stuff, and then I bring them back, and then I discuss with them what I've picked up. Perfect. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So so as you know i do angel oracle cards and guide meditations and each week i like to ask my guests whether they would like me to do a mini guide meditation and pull an angel oracle card or whether they would like to do something and combine with it so obviously we've got vivian and she's does light language <laughs> yeah. Funny enough. Funny enough. so vivian what do you think we should do well, I reckon if we pull a card, well, if you pull a card, we'll see what it is. I will put my glasses on so I can see it. <laughs> I only took my glasses off because the reflection of my, was on my on the lenses. Um, so, yes, what I think would be a fab idea is if you give your explanation of the card and such like and I'll tune into it, do a bit of light language and see what I may have picked up intuitively. I may not pick up anything, but let's see what we get for everybody. I like I like the sound of that. So as always, I give the cards a quick cleanse and a bless. And as always, when I do the cards, I do the cards for what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time. Because even though I work with past life stuff, we go into the past to actually heal and learn from so it doesn't affect you in the present. And when we go into the future, so you can learn about the future, get um, guidance and clarity, but bring that back to the present. So... What does Vivian and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? What does Vivian and everyone watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? So, what have we got? Okay, so we have got valiant courage, take action with passion. <laughs> awesome. Which you, you can't get any better um, than that. So, so basically what this is saying to Vivian and to everyone here watching is that you need to start taking action. You know, what is it you're passionate about? What is it you want to bring to the world? What do you want to do with your life? You know, and now is the time the, the university angels are saying, you know, take the action now, enjoy doing it, explore it, be curious with it, see where it takes you. Um, you know, what riches abundance is it, going, is it going to bring you? You know, have that courage now to take those steps, to take the action and move forward with what you want to do. <laughs> I love that card. <laughs> it's a really good card. <laughs> you see, this is the magic of cards, isn't it? Mm. Like they, they come out with the most pertinent card. Exactly. Exactly. So I'll hand over to you. So, um, okay, I'll close my eyes and see what comes in. Take deep breath in, deep breath out. Everyone else can join in with that. Breathe in, breathe out, and I'll be connecting with those who are watching it now, future, present, past, because everything is all at the same time. Any more so comala, Malahim, Kinikil Tomo, or Simiti Sami. Eminishishomal or Simit Kumad, eight minute kitty, some of the kitty. Amanako Toman, it could to Momi, he cut at his in an age kitty. Emily sit more to Manan and Kitty Mummy, but a day. I'm a kitty, people, I'm the kitty, get a woman, I get a good get a good rag, the kitty, get a good get a good get a good get a good. Is in the Katumani Katana, each human is the same. Omalesso Mahito Malakit Katamaki Kutuman, is the Menchkuma. Any mini so Mahit no more. Eminace Monahikan and Ink to her morning, my Katuma at Matina, Esimichkuma, each Kuman Tumanini, each Molana Zene, Omeni Katanuma, Echumkono, Esitima, Echimanati Kimone, any Mola Simotukumala at Mokani, Echi Pita. Esse 
Esi tumana hisu tumana atumani isipti. Hemini sochu kumala hi humana alia isipto nosip kumala atumana hi. Elepi tu asho de talento rajo modalo tara i kata roja bata i beton jede. Emo ti tafo jo madata i tato kato i shara la vora sha. Eso berete de minuto i kato jine i tu li tu da rojo na bata i tato jo la do kato kato jo modelo. Eso le bora jine di rai kato do 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 jira bara. Eso le bara. Eso no to no se hemene te. Oh, that was amazing. It was, it, was, it was like whilst you were going on, it's like I'm, I'm, too, I'm, I'm talking to myself with it. It's like, uh, it's like I'm, ans I'm answering this. It's, it's, it's like, and, and that's what I think it's kind of like we don't understand what the words actually are, but we feel it. It's like on a subconscious level that we know. Yeah, there, there's, it is the vibration of the energy of the sound, I think. Um, I'm sure if we had a language expert who has investigated prior languages, you know, extinct languages or whatever, they may, they may find it or, or not. Or we may have an astrophysicist who will say the sound waves coming from outer space match the resonance of what we're doing. It's all exciting things. It's, 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 all, it's all so fascinating. But, but what I was getting was, um, from uh, while I was doing it, I was getting a lot of, um, it was about bringing energy from out within and to sense that energy and ground that energy. The energy is very strong and powerful. And to actually accept it and bring it into your body and feel it, and let it move through you don't don't be rebuffing it 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 needs as people you know i don't know if um, people look at human resonance and see what the earth earth resonance is doing and there's a lot of planetary aspects that are going on that's causing energy shifts but uh, i was particularly getting and this was where my hands were was I know you can't necessarily see if I was like getting energy coming in from the back and from the sides. It was just like about let's bring it all in into the body and process it. And even if it's something that you are getting in your dreams, it may be that you get messages through your dreams. You know, have a dream diary. I have one. I don't miss three. You know, even if it's just you remember a word, put a word down. And, you know, you may then remember later in the day, you think, oh, yeah, there was that, there was that. Um, I'm trying to think what I dreamt this last night, but yeah, I did write it down, um, probably a few sentences. Um, I, I don't necessarily piece together what they mean, but at least I've written them down. <laughs> so we yeah, can I, see I, what I, happens. <laughs> I, have bad, I have a bad habit for getting to write them down. Um, uh, but, uh, mm. Uh, uh, that's just me so you know so anyone watching you know if when Vivian um, was doing the light language you felt that you kind of like in your head or you were saying out loud you were answering or, or going along with it do let us know um, mm. uh, in, 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 in the comments because um, it's not often that I'll sort of like want to answer someone else's um, uh, language when, when, when they're using it so Vivian do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers um, I feel that at the moment it's a very important time for all of us and it is about being open, accepting that energy in and also being positive raising your vibration knowing that you raising yours as your one person is raising it exponentially for the earth for the world for the universe for source for everyone else so if we're all doing it then it it feeds on itself and it just it will help everyone beautiful wise wise words there 
So I hope everyone you've enjoyed this conversation and found insightful because I know I definitely have. So Vivian, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? So please um, connect with me on Facebook under Vivian Fox. And I've also got my email address, which is uh, Vivian at VivianFox.com. And there will be a web website, um, hopefully in the near future. Not hopefully, not hopefully. There is going to be a, there will be. site in the near future. Next year. Um, so, sorry, that it's just going to be next, by next year. Um, in fact, by March next year, you're going to have the website. Um, no, 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 hopefully you are going to have a website by March next year. Um, so thank you so much, Vivian, for sharing your, your wisdom. It's been absolutely amazing having you on the show. And of course, for everyone watching, if you are now ready to remember your divine presence and step onto your spiritual multidimensional path, but you feel lost, confused, stuck or alone, then please feel free to connect with me and we can arrange a free video call to discuss where you are now and how you can move forward to take charge of your destiny so that you can spread your wings and soar. And of course, please feel free to join my weekly newsletter and receive a free future life progression recording where I take you into a future lifetime to get guidance and clarity that you can use in your current life, as well as a couple of other free gifts. And again, thank you so much for watching. And I'd like to invite you to share this video, as I'm sure there are more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny, just like you. And of course, if you are watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button. Be notified when the show goes live or I post new guided meditations, because every subscribe, really, really helps um, bring uh, my energy out into the world. And I look forward to seeing you all same time, same place next week. Take care. And again, thank you so much, Vivian. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>